going to talk a little bit about FT8 and what is FT8. Before we get to that, let's talk, let's take a step back and talk about what is weak signal radio communication. Whenever we use ham radios, you typically think of it as using Morse code or using voice um, with a microphone and speaker. Um, and those are your traditional methods of using ham radio. Well, as time has uh, progressed and our technology has progressed, we now have the capability to be able to use signal processors um, to be able to transfer information over a ham radio. One of the problems that we face with voice communications is it's dependent upon our ears to be able to hear someone. And whenever we run into a problem where we can't hear the other person on the other side, all hope is typically lost. What weak signal radio communication allows us to do is to use the power of computer processors to be able to process the signal to be able to detect information in there where maybe you couldn't hear it with your voice, but you can hear, the computer can hear signals in there and be able to interpret it. And so WSJT is software, some open source, open source software that allows you to um, transmit and receive those signals. Um, and a pretty popular one right now is called FT8. Um, it's relatively newer. Uh, it, it came out in 2017. Um, it doesn't really allow you to communicate too much other than tell someone what their signal report is um, and be able to just do contesting. We can talk about contesting at another time, but essentially it is a very minimalistic approach to being able to communicate with other people. Now there's other derivatives um, like JS8 that allows you to do basically text messaging back and forth using the same protocol. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna talk about FT8. And so I was talking about how sometimes we can't hear people and a lot of times it may not necessarily be our equipment or our capabilities, but the band conditions. And this is a, a site called Ham QSL that um, they, they report on the ham conditions, uh, the band conditions every single day, and they let you know what, what frequencies, what bands are gonna work and what aren't. And so right now we're, we're actually kind of lucky because tonight we've got um, 80 meter to 40 meter is working really well. And that hasn't been the case for a while. This has been all poor to fair um, for months and months. And a lot of that is attributed to solar flares and other astronomical uh, conditions. Um, and so this just gives us a quick uh, brief synopsis of that. And as you can see, it allows us to do a lot of communication. So this is my logbook. A lot of these um, communications you can see are FT8, um, but I've been able to talk all around the world um, using this protocol um, where I probably wouldn't be able to with voice on a lot of these um, transmissions. So let's get to it. So. This is WSJT, and so I know that there's a lot going on in this screen, but we're gonna break it down and I'm gonna tell you, you know, what, what's going on here. So here we have, this is the total band activity. So right now we're on 40 meters, and so all 40 meter um, FT8 communications typically happen on this frequency, which is 7.074, and so we can see this is the string of communications that's coming in here. And when it's green, that means someone's basically saying CQ means, hey, I'm trying to communicate. Is there anybody out there that can hear me? And so we could communicate with them. Uh, so what do we have here? So this is the time it came in. This is the decibels. This is really important right here. So this basically tells us the strength of the signal that's coming in. So not always, but the likelihood of being able to communicate with someone um, that has a 
higher decibel um, rating is much better than someone with a lower decibel rating. And um, like I said, it's not always the case. Like sometimes, uh, even though you're barely hearing them, uh, they can hear you just fine because they probably have better equipment than you. Um, and so, um, so we have our decibels, um, you know, what basic sub frequency they're on um, inside of that. And then what, what was said. So if we look at, um, let's see if it, if, let's hope it doesn't move on me. Okay. So if you look at one of these here, we've got CQ, which means basically calling everybody, anybody can hear me, their call sign. So that's the call sign of the, uh, the ham radio operator. And then that's the grid location right there. So that QF69. So that's where they are in the world. Um, VK, I believe that's Canada. So that's somewhere in Canada, probably East Coast, I would guess. Um, and so this is all our various settings. We don't really need to worry about this too much, but basically our frequency, what frequency we're on, you know, um, you know, time of day, etc. standard messages that we would use. Um, but we can adjust those, but typically you don't need to for FT8. That's the standard of what you would use. Um, let's move over to this side here. So this is what we have, what's called our waterfall. And so this is the visualization of the signals that we have coming in. So you can see the, the brighter um, orange, yellow, purple color, whatever that is, um, these are our signals that are coming in. So FT8 is sent in um, frames. So a sequence, a timed sequence. So you can see how these frames are between the green lines. So the communications line up perfectly to those frames and everybody's synced. It's important that you're synced to a clock that's accurate on your computer um, otherwise, this won't work correctly, and your frames will be off compared to everybody else that is synced up. Um, but you can see we have, uh, you know, a communication here, a communication here, a communication here, a communication here, and a communication here. Those are the strong ones anyways um, on this frame. You know, we have some probably right here, right here, especially right here. But those are definitely weaker signals. And so those are probably your negative decibels where these are your positive or close to zero, at least, um, uh, messages that are coming in and the signals. Like you can see this one. This one's really strong that's coming in right here. Um, and so you can see we're tuned up to like 2400 um, hertz. Um, I just put it there because it is the least noisy right now. No one was talking on it and I didn't want to bring up stuff here. But what we can do is, so let's say that we, let's find a, a communication here that we have a good chance of communicating. So this one here. So if I, oh, I think I clicked the wrong one. So what it's doing now is you can see it, we are sending a message to, this person telling him who we are and what grid we come from. And so that grid is Utah. That's where I'm, I live. Um, it's Northern Utah. And so in theory, if they heard this communication, they would respond back to us and someone else is talking to him. So it's not going to work, but let's use, let's do one. That's probably more likely to connect to us. Let's try this one here. So they've, they're positive six decibels. So they've got a good strong signal for us. Let's hope that that signal reciprocates. Let's see if they can hear us. Oh, see, they, they heard us. So that red tells us, yeah, they can hear us. And they're getting me at negative four decibels. And then I'm just responding back automatically that I received him with six decibels positive. And so we're gonna get another message that he's gonna say, yes, I received your signal report. And it's gonna say like RR73, yep, there it is. So 73 is basically saying end of communication. 
And so as when he says RR73, now we're going to automatically respond with 73, which is basically saying goodbye. And so that's the basics of what an FT8 communication looks like, is we're going, um, calling them out because they were calling. Anybody can, can anybody hear me? We said, yes, I can. I'm calling from this location. They're saying, okay, I heard you and I hear you at negative four decibels. And then we're saying, perfect. I can hear you at six positive six decibels. And they say, I, I read your report and goodbye. And then I said, goodbye. And so that's the basics of what an FT8 communication is like. And you can see, I didn't talk about this yet, but this is a, a, a separate application called Grid Tracker. And you can see this pop up let us know that we're communicating basically that this this transaction was taking place so we can dismiss that but what grid tracker allows us to do is it allows us to see all the active communications so these are the active communications that we can hear with my antenna right now around the united states so blue ones are like active communications that are going back and forth um, and then green ones are people that are calling CQ or saying, can anybody hear me? So an open call. Um, now what's cool about this is we have the ability to literally communicate around the world with this. And so right now we're on 40 meters and 40 meters works really well around the world at night. And that's why we can see this like horizon sun line um, or shadow line right now. And that's basically telling us where the sun has set on the planet. And so everywhere where the sun is set, it is way more likely for us to be able to communicate with that person. So here we have the edge of Australia is just barely starting to um, get uh, nighttime over there. And the sun is setting, as you can see. So someone like this right here, this VK2 JJM, so we can see we can... We can zoom in and see that person. We've got people talking to someone in Fiji. Um, but we can see who that is that's calling on that grid. So we can see their call sign, um, where they're located, and like what the prefix of their call sign is, what country that's from. So we can see VK is Australia. And so what we're going to try to do, let's see if we can't get that person. So let's click over here. I think that was the JJM one. Yeah. So we're going to try communicating with him, even though it's a negative 13. Um, there's still a possibility for us to be able to hit that person. And so when I double click on oh, one of these CQs over here, um, it's automatically changing the frequency for me here. And here you can see that they were, now we're on 2, 1210. And so now we're going to try to communicate. And so it'll go for a while. I think it will go like, a max of like 10 tries of trying to communicate with that person because they may not hear us the first time. And then especially on weaker signals, it may take us a little bit to be able to communicate with them as the band conditions change and get better or worse. Okay, you can see they talked to somebody else already. Um, oh no, that was another, that was another call. So we're still trying to message them. And you can see that, that our messaging is enabled right here. So, and you can see the status down here as well, where it's receiving. And then when we start transmitting, it will say transmitting, I believe. Oh, he heard us. We're really weak though. You can see for him, we're negative 21. So, you know, we're just barely making it <laughs> over there. But with a voice communication, they wouldn't even know we were there at all. And that's the beauty of this signal processing with a computer is we're able to pick up that very, very faint signal and be able to communicate with other people all around the world um, with relative ease as long as we have access to a computer. And so this may take us a couple times in order to truly get the communications all the way through for us to get an RR73 from him.
and we can see right here he's not transmitting back so the likelihood of us getting something right now is probably pretty slim we're gonna have to wait for the next frame at the very least And you can see the waterfall pauses while I'm transmitting because a radio can't receive and transmit uh, in duplex, at least not my radio, not most ham radios. They can, they can only do one at a time. And so that's why it kind of pauses the, the waterfall there. So we may have just got lucky on this one communications and so we may not be able to hit that guy again. We'll see, we'll give it another one more try here and then we'll call it quits on this. Oh, but you know what I can do is I can actually enable, if you guys wanna hear what FT8 sounds like, um, if you ever heard modem or fax machine, similar to that um but it's a it's a digital noise so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the ham radio and you can hear it for a frame um i'm going to turn off my uh my transmission though first give me one second here so you should be able to hear the ham radio now So it's not super pleasant to listen to, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I obviously keep my speaker turned off for those communications because that would be annoying to listen to nonstop. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much ham radio in a nutshell for FT8. Um, it can get more complex than this. And maybe I'll do another video and we'll talk about JSA call and what the, um, the differences and similarities to FT8 um, is with JS8. And so that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions um, or comments. Leave them down below. And um, thanks so much.